Hello everyone. Uh, sorry for the disembodied voice routine, but uh, this these sorts of problems I think require you to pay much more attention to uh, what's written on the screen than my facial expressions. So these uh, what we're what we're going to do here this time around is we're going to actually symbolize propositions. We've gone through tr truth relations. We've gone through terms and definitions, uh, and now we're going to have to actually start assigning variables. Uh, to sentences. This will result in kind of a calculus for uh, uh, for these arguments. So the first thing, the first rule for these symbolizations are the variables, the letters that we're going to use to represent atomic propositions. We're going to use these for atomic propositions. For the, so the first rule is to use P, Q, R, and so on through Z for atomic propositions. Do this in order, right? Don't start with A, B, C, or D, and don't start with T, right? Start with P. All right, so use P, this is the first rule, P, Q, R, and so on for these atomic propositions. One of the reasons why I'm being so persnickety about this is that we will be, you, you will be completing your homework on Canvas, and there needs to be a uniform way for you to complete these, uh, uh, turn in these assignments. So it's one of the reasons why we have such strict rules. So what's this look like? Well, uh, take a look at this uh, sentence here, right? So we're trying to, again, following this rule, uh, morality is justified by cultural belief only if our culture is morally impeccable. So just look at that first sentence. So the first thing you need to do is to identify the uh, atomic propositions. Right? And morality is justified by culture belief. That's the first atomic proposition. That's the first atomic proposition. And the uh, phrase here, only if, is our logical connective. And only if, if you remember, gives us a conditional. And uh, the only if, what follows the only if, indicates the consequent, what, what occurs before the only if, is the antecedent. And this gives us, this leads us to our second uh, uh, atomic proposition, uh, our culture is morally impeccable. Okay, so this is the first sentence, morality is justified by cultural belief, only if our culture is morally impeccable. So uh, this gives us two atomic propositions and our logical connected. So this already tells us that we got a conditional. Okay, so let's just concentrate then upon this first rule and assigning a letter to the first atomic proposition. Well, following our rule one, the first atomic proposition, morality is justified by cultural belief, that will be assigned P. Okay? That's assigned P. Uh, so that's our first atomic proposition. What about our second? Again, following rule one, we got our you know, second proposition here, our culture is morally impeccable, that will be assigned Q. Right, so again, in order. So you you so the first atomic proposition you get, that's a sign P. The second atomic proposition you get, that's a sign Q. All right, that's our rule one. First proposition is a sign P, second proposition is a sign Q. Don't start with D, don't start with T. Now you start with P and go on from there. And don't skip, right? Don't go P T. <laughs> so P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, so on. Okay. So we've got our truth assignment, we've got our, our, our variables, excuse me, we've got our variables for our first two atomic propositions. Well, let's take a look in the next, next sentence. And the next sentence starts off with either, so that already tells us it is junction. And more than that, we've got either it is false that. So we got, this should tell us right away, we've got a disjunction of negations. Uh, well, let's take a look at the atomic proposition part, our culture is morally impeccable. Well, this should look really familiar. <laughs> After all, that's our assignment for Q. Now you might say, well, then I'll assign this R. No, this brings us to our second rule. Use the same letter for the same atomic proposition throughout the argument. That's the second rule. Use the same letter for the same atomic proposition throughout the argument. So our culture is morally impeccable. That gets assigned Q still, All right? Still. Okay, so you know, I had here, it's it's false that, right? Yeah, that tells us we got a disjunct, uh, sorry, we got a negation here, All right? Even though, this is a negation, right? The atomic proposition part still is assigned Q. This isn't a new atomic proposition, it's still the same atomic proposition. Also notice that we got you know either or happening here. Okay. That so that, that's another logical connective. Then we got the second it is false that. All right. Well now this brings us to uh, uh, you know so we this brings us to our third atomic proposition in the argument, and that's that something needs to change in our culture. All right. So following rule one and rule two, it's assigned R. And since it's a new proposition, that's why it gets R, right? Um, 
Okay, so let's take a look at the next one, see if we have any more new atomic propositions. Well, the next one is something needs to change in our culture. Well, we just dealt with that. So it, it's so following rule two, it still has R as its uh, letter. And the last atomic, pro oh, and we got, and yeah, however. <laughs> however, it, it's just a connecting word. Uh, it's actually not even a logical connective. This is just more to indicate sort of mood, <laughs> sort, of, sort of thing. But sometimes it helps to use the, these sorts of connecting words in order to indicate the flow of the argument and that you're still providing premises, for instance. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the next thing we have is it is false set. That's the logical connective. The word so there, I haven't highlighted it, but the word so that indicates the conclusion. Right? If you remember from that, those sets of our, uh, those sets of assignments were back there. That indicates the conclusion, and the atomic proposition part of it is morality is justified by cultural belief. Well, that was our first, uh, a first atomic proposition. So it's still assigned P. Okay. So rule one and rule two use P, Q, and R to uh, for the atomic propositions. Start at P. Work in succession all the way up to Z. Uh, assign a letter for the atomic propositions. And if an atomic proposition gets a letter, use the same letter for, for all of it. Okay, so that, that's atomic propositions. Let's start taking a look at some of the complex propositions. Complex propositions. So we will uh, symbolize negations. Right? Remember, negation is a logical connective, um, although just, <laughs> it's just assigned to the one letter. Um, it, 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 we'll use the uh, minus sign for uh, negations. And if uh, on a standard QWERTY keyboard, that, that's Q-W-E-R-T-Y. If you never heard of this, right, this is the standard sort of keyboard where the letters are set up and the, you know, look at that upper, you know, the second row starting a Q, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. That's, that's why it's called a called a QWERTY keyboard. A little bit of nerd trivia there for you. Uh, on a standard QWERTY keyboard, we'll use the minus sign for a negation. So that will go immediately before the proposition to indicate a negation. I want to be careful. Do not use shift minus, right? That produces a dash. That's a different symbol. The computer recognizes these as two different symbols, right? Do not use a dash, right? Do not use a dash. <laughs> uh, so it's not shift and and then the minus button, just the minus button. Okay, just the minus button. All right. So we're going to assign a letter for each negation. Assign a letter for each negation. Uh, and we're going to stick with this same uh, argument, right? We'll stick with the same example that we're dealing with. So looking at this first negation here, it contains, it's in the second sentence. It is false that our culture is morally impeccable. And we got a second negation. It is false that something needs to change in our culture. Now, uh, let's just go over the first one, right? It is false that our culture is morally impeccable. Well, we already signed a uh, letter assignment to this, right? And when, uh, when we saw that, so following rule one and rule two, and now our symbol for negation, this this is given, you know, not Q, right? That, that minus Q, not the dash Q, minus Q. And the second uh, negation, you know, something needs to change in our culture, or it's false that something needs to change in our culture. Well, it had a, a assignment too for a letter, uh, you know, and that was R. So this is symbolized as minus R, right? minus R. And that's how we symbolize negations within uh, the, these logical formula. Well, let's take a look at conjunctions. To symbolize a conjunction, we're going to use the ampersand. And that's what this thing is called, right? If you look at that little symbol above the seven, it's called an ampersand. So you produce that with a shift seven to produce that ampersand, or you might have just called it the and symbol. Right? So that's what we use for uh, uh, conjunctions. Now I have to change uh, uh, examples here <laughs> to uh, illustrate uh, um, uh, a conjunction. So the, there are fish in these waters and this is good bait, right? So if we're gonna sign uh, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna turn this into a logical formula. Well, first we have to identify the two atomic propositions. There are fish in these waters. That's the first one, and this is good bait. That's the second one, right? And we have the logical connect connected between and. So following rule one, all right? There are fish in these waters. That gets P. Following rule one and you know rule two, all right? This is good bait. That gets Q. So if we're gonna symbolize this conjunction, yeah. There are fish in these waters, and this is good bait. We use that with P, ampersand, Q. So I want to point out here, when we dealt with negations, there should be no space 
between the minus symbol and the proposition. No space for negations between the minus symbol and the propositions. For pretty much everything else, when we deal with conjunctions, there should be a space between the proposition and the ampersand and the following proposition. And there should be one and only one space uh, showing those. You have to be precise when you type this into the computer, uh, otherwise the computer's not uh, gonna count it wrong. It's not gonna recognize uh, you know, that, that sort of simple error. So if we're doing a conjunction, we got the proposition, the ampersand, and the, and the second proposition, and that should be separated by space each. All right, let's take a look at disjunctions. Uh, disjunctions, if you remember, give us subcontrariety, or if we've got a disjunction of negations, that's contrariety. But to symbolize a disjunction, we're going to use just the lowercase v, not an uppercase, just the lowercase v. So just press the v button. So let's take, let's see what this looks like uh, with our example that we dealt with. Now the either indicates, uh, so the either or indicates a disjunction. That tells us we got a disjunction, and we also have to pay note to the uh, negations, right? That those are in there too, the negations. Um, so we have to account for those too in our symbolization, and these are our two atomic propositions okay now uh so the uh, uh so we got to keep in mind we got to we already covered how to symbolize negation so we're going to use this here in our symbolization but we've also got the disjunction now remember following so our, our proposition here is either it's false that our culture is morally critical or it's false that something needs to change in our culture okay well uh, remember following rule one and rule two that first atomic proposition got q that second atomic proposition got r and we looked at how to symbolize the negation, so it would be you know minus q and minus r for the for the two negations. But then to symbolize the disjunction of those two, right? We have that little lowercase v in the middle. And again, there's a space between the first proposition and the logical connective, and a single space between the sec between the logical connective and the second proposition when dealing with the disjunctions. The minus symbol, not so much. That minus symbol needs to be right up next to the proposition, right? But the uh, logic, but the disjunction and conjunction, there's a space separate, space separating the logical connector from the two propositions, from the two disjuncts in this case. All right, let's take a look at conditionals. Conditionals are a little different. We're going to use the uh, greater than symbol, so that's right over here, right? Is that, or you might think of it as a right arrow <laughs> symbol if you really, if you really want to think of it that way, and you use it by pressing that shift button and and that the, that button there for the right arrow on the QWERTY keyboard. And that's gonna give us, uh, you know, the antecedent will be on the left-hand side of the symbol and the uh, consequent will be on the right-hand side of the symbol, okay? So we've got our, uh, uh, our example here. And it, as it happens, we've got a logical connected that indicates a conditional, remember that? And we have the two atomic propositions. And following rule one or rule two, if you remember before, that first one got a P and the second one got a Q. So that's our conditional. Uh, and this, uh, this, uh, uh, that sentence there is our conditional morality is justified by our culture only if our culture is morally impeccable. Uh, so following rule one or rule two, we got P, we got Q, and got that right-hand symbol right in between. Oh, so the right arrow symbol, that greater, greater than symbol right in between. And again, there's a space between the first proposition and the logical connective, but there's a space between the logical connective and the second proposition. Uh, we want to make sure we get that right. So that's how we're going to symbolize um, a conditional. All right. Um, now, keep in mind that conditionals can be written in a couple of different ways. Okay? So look at this. We've got, we've got to change around a little bit. Our culture is morally impeccable if morality is justified by our cultural belief. All right. Now, remember the difference between if on the one hand and only if on the other. If it's only if, that indicates a consequent. That's what we saw last time. But in this case, we've merely got if. Well, now that indicates an antecedent. Remember, antecedents will not always be written first within the sentence. Okay. Now, since the order of the atomic propositions has changed, their, their letter assignments has also changed. And remember, following rule one, the first atomic proposition gets P, the second atomic proposition gets Q. Right. Well, in this case, our culture is more impeccable is now assigned P, whereas in the example before, since uh, that, that proposition occurred second, it was assigned Q. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but this time it's assigned P, 
And the consequent now, immorality, excuse me, the uh, uh, antecedent is morality is justified by cultural belief. Since that occurs second this time, it's a sine Q. So instead of P uh, greater than Q, right, instead of the P uh, with that uh, point Q, the order is reversed because uh, of how they, uh, no, so they, you know, the, whether it's a P or Q, that's reversed now because of the order of their presentation within the argument. So conditionals are going to throw you as far as this is concerned. Right? Conditionals are going to throw you. Whenever you got a disjunction, whenever you got a conjunction, you'll always be able to just put them in the order that they appear. That's not an issue. Conditionals are going to be the weird ones. Condition, you know, which one is sufficient for the other? That matters with conditionals. Right? That matters. So you, you want to be careful with this. When you uh, be aware, so the first thing, right? When you see a conditional, find the antecedent, find the consequent. Would I have a, whatever has an only if following after that? That's a consequent. Whatever has an if following it, that's the antecedent. Okay, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Now, most of these, not most, at least some of these arguments are not going to have atomic propositions as their components. And remember I told you, complex propositions can have complex propositions as their components. Now when that happens, you need to use parentheses to group together, you know, the smallest grouping, so to speak, right? I mean, the smallest grouping of atomic propositions uh, with logical connectives. So we'll use the parentheses to indicate, you know, the smallest, group, smallest grouping of atomic propositions uh, connected by connectives. Here. Um, you know, two or more connected by connectives. Uh, so uh, to use the parentheses, just so you know, you know we got, uh, where are they? Here they are. <laughs> use the shift button with the nine and the zero. Now the parentheses, the left-hand parentheses should always be right up next to that proposition on the left. And that, you know, close parentheses should be right up next to the uh, proposition on the right, right? So there shouldn't be a space between the parenthesis and, uh, parenthe and the propositions that it's enclosing. Okay. Now, you might need to have a space outside the parentheses. That's, you know, that depends upon which connective you're using. But the parenthesis should always be right up next to the propositions that it's enclosing. Okay. So we use uh, uh, these parentheses here for that. Okay. Uh, so here's a proposition. Morality is justified by cultural belief only if our culture is morally impeccable and it is false that something needs to change. Okay. Now, immediately, you, you might be a little confused by this sentence because so, it kind of looks like this. All right? P, traditional, Q, ampersand, not R. Well, this is not a proper... Uh, this is not a, a proposition that expresses a logical, uh, expresses a, a truth relation, right? We don't know if the truth relation is supposed to be indicated by the ampersand or supposed to be ended by the, indicated by the conditional. You know, we could have either one of these here. It could be a, this sentence could be a conditional where the consequent is a conjunction, or this sentence could be a conjunction where the first conjunct is a, uh, a conditional and the second conjunct, conjunct is a negation. Okay? we got two possibilities here. Uh, and even when you read it, you might get confused as to which one it's supposed to be. Okay? You know, this is why grammar is <laughs> grammar and punctuation is very important. So I'm going to show you two differences here. So the one on the left is where we have the conjunction, and the one on the right is where we have uh, a conditional. Now, what's supposed to be the big difference between these two that indicates which one? Well, it's this little comma right here. That's the difference. That's what tells us whether we're dealing with a conjunction overall or conditional overall. Okay. And there can be complex propositions within complex propositions. That's fine. Right? I'm not, not complaining about that. This is a good thing. Um, it, you know, it can be complicated after a while, but these are complex thought to express. But if you're going to express these properly, you must use proper punctuation. In this case, the comma makes all the difference. If the comma hadn't been, that, been there, this would be a uh, conditional. This would be a conditional. But the commas is there, so we've got a conjunction. And this is how we properly express this complex sentence with complex, as a complex proposition with complex propositions as the conjuncts. So again, look, take, you know, take a close look at that, how the parentheses are used. That parentheses is right up next to the P for the open the parentheses, and that closed parentheses is right up next to the Q. Uh, don't have a space between 
uh, between the parenthesis and the conjunction uh, and, and the uh, proposition there. Okay. Now this brings us to sequence. Now sequence is when we take these formula representing the premises and the conclusion, and we use when we have just a single string of symbols to represent an entire argument. Right, we're going to use this to express an entire argument. So with this, we got rule one and rule two. Well, we're going to need further rules. Let rule three list the conclusion last. Right. Always list the conclusion last in the sequence. And to indicate that you got a conclusion, we get two vertical bars and a space after the vertical bar and then the conclusion. Right. So for the vertical bars, again, on a standard QWERTY keyboard, you'll find them right here using the shift button and that uh, um, backwards leaning dash I think it's called a backdash. Anyway, uh, uh, you find them here. Uh, 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 that, that's the vertical bar that I'm talking about. Right? That's the vertical bar I'm talking about. So let's write a sequence for this argument. Again, we got our, our example here. And that word so, that indicates our conclusion. And you remember we got morality is justified by cultural belief. With the uh, is false that. So our conclusion is it is false that morality is justified by cultural belief. Now, if you remember... Following rule one and rule two, when we saw that earlier, morality is justified by culture, but that was already given the truth, the uh, letter P. All right, so you still follow rule one for the assignment of letters, and you assign them in order. Um, and so we know that that gets, uh, you know, minus, you know, not P as the conclusion. Okay, so that's the rule covering conclusions. You know, we got a, a space. The, you know, I'll, I'll explain. I'll say this again in a little bit. But we got say we got the last proposition for the premises, a space, two vertical bars, a space, and then the conclusion. So the the rule four lists the premises in order they appear in the argument, and each is separated by a comma. Okay, so we have the conclusion. We already brought that out, and we've got our first. Uh, we got our first pro uh, uh, premise here. Morality is justified by culture free only if our culture is morally impeccable. Following rule one and rule two, that first atomic proposition got P, the second atomic pro proposition got Q. We have them connected using our conditional sign, that right pointing arrow, so to speak, or the greater than symbol. It's the greater than symbol. All right, so that's our first proposition. That's the first sentence, that's the first proposition. It gets a comma right after it. Put that comma right up against the end of the first premise, but then a space after the comma. Second, um, proposi uh, second proposition, we've got that either or, so we know it's a disjunction. We've got the negations, so we know it's a disjunction on negations. Right? Our culture is more than impeccable. That already got assigned Q by rule one uh, and you know rule two, right? so it's using the same proposition there and something needs to change in our culture that was assigned r so we have this not q uh you know minus q space little v minus you know space minus r right and now we got the comma right so that's our second premise right and this brings us to our third premise however something needs to change in our culture that however that's not a logical connective it just helps us to understand what's going on within the uh, within the sentence so it's not actually symbolized by anything something needs to change in our culture well, that was already assigned a letter by rule one and rule two. Uh, before it was a you know negated uh, atomic proposition. Now time now is just the assertion of the proposition. All right, so there's no it's just an atomic sentence, right? This this premise here is just an atomic sentence. So it gets R. Notice the last premise you don't get. There's not another comma, right? There's just a space between the last premise and the two vertical bars. Then the space again uh, with the conclusion, right? With the conclusion, this is how your sequence should look. Pay very close attention to how this is written, because the computer is going to be looking for exact entries for these answers. So don't do this, right? Don't start squeezing in spaces. Uh, you know, don't forget the space between the comma and the premise, and don't forget the space between the conclusion, the premises, and the vertical bars. Right? The vertical bars shouldn't have any spaces between them, but there should be a space on either side of the vertical bars. Especially don't do this. Don't just type in a string of letters. The computer is not going to recognize what's going on. You have to separate these letters fr uh, uh, from each other. You have to separate the propositions from each other. And on the other hand, don't put in too many spaces, right? <laughs> don't uh, just start putting a space between everything. No, they take a look at that minus Q. That's wrong. That, ne that negation symbol needs to be right up next to the uh, proposition. 
Uh, the vertical bars, notice they have a space between or now. Don't do that. Don't put a space between the vertical bars, okay? So just to reiterate, this is what a proper entry looks like. And this is how you have a proper entry for this. Okay, so let's take a look at a few practice exercises. <clears throat> so the first sort of exercise, you'll need to select the right formula given you know the question, right? So this question asks for a conjunction. Which formula is a conjunction? Now, th this is pretty straightforward. This is not you know, a mystery <laughs> as to what's going on. Uh, you know, a conjunction is uh, represented with an ampersand, and we see that with the third option, the bottom option is the greater than symbol, that's for the conditional. The top is the lowercase v, that's a disjunction. Uh, the sec second for the top is a v, that's, that's a disjunction, and the top is, is negation. So you just you select the correct uh, uh, formula. Now, um, you know, the way to do this is you, you look for the connective. Right, you look for the connective and you remember, okay, conjunction is the ampersand and you know, there you go, you see it right there. Now, uh, while that one's pretty straightforward, some of these can get a little complicated, especially when we have uh, uh, complex propositions within uh, complex propositions. So you need to pay attention to the negations, right? And you need to pay attention to the parentheses. So looking at the bottom one, uh, that bottom one there, is not uh, a negation overall. There are negations in it, right? That's a complex proposition with negations in it, but overall, it's not a negation. That bottom one is a conjunction of negations. Hmm? Look at the second from the bottom. <clears throat> overall, even though you know, we got the parentheses, right? And we got negations, but overall, that is a disjunction. That's a disjunction. Look at the main connective there in the middle, right? Um, you can see that with with this one, we're really clue. You know, gives you the clue here is the parentheses for starters, right? So that parentheses gives you a complex proposition within the complex proposition. So that tells you that that uh, you know it should give you a clue as to what's the main operator overall. Uh, and, and so yeah, in this case, it's the is the disjunction. Go up one more, you know, second from the top. And right? overall, again, there's negations in there, but it's not a negation. Right? Overall, it's a conditional. It's a conditional. So it's a conditional with negated and with a negated antecedent and a negated consequent. Uh, the top one is actually the negation. It's the negation of a conditional, right? So it says it's not the case that if p then q. It's a negation of a conditional, but the components of the conditional are not themselves negations, right? So the top one is a negation of a conditional. The second from the top is a conditional with negations. Yeah, there's there's an, uh, a difference there. So again, there's this top one here that's actually the negation. Okay, now uh, this sort of uh, question is a different sort of question instead of just merely identifying the kind of formula. Right? Now you're given a sentence in English and you're supposed to find the formula that represents it. Okay, so take a, you know, so, uh, you know, you have to look for the connective here. Look for the right connective. So you have to look at the uh, sentence itself. The animal is a llama, so the animal is a mammal. Well, that word so there, that's the connective. The other two are the, the other, the animal is a llama, that's a atomic proposition. The animal is a mammal, that's another atomic proposition. All right, so what sort of connective is so? Is it a uh, disjunction? No, it's not, right? No, it's not. The connectives for disjunctions were or or unless, right? either or or unless. Um, what does the word so is supposed to indicate? Well, it, it gives us a kind of inference, right? From the first one to the second, right? So is that a uh, conditional? Yes, it is, right? That, so that's what the other three are, right? We got the other three, uh, we got three conditionals here. Okay. Well, uh, we've got, you know, if P, right, we've got a conditional with P uh, greater than Q, right? There, there's the P conditional Q. We've got not P conditional, not Q. That's the third option. And then P conditional R. Well, which one is it? Well, um, are there, yeah, yeah, so we have to look for negations. Are there negations here? Well, you don't see any negations, right? The animal's a llama, the animal's a mammal. These are both assertions. These are both affirmatives. Okay. So we know it's not that third one from the bottom. Well, then we have P conditional Q and then P conditional R. Well, these are both conditionals and they both kind of look right. You know, so what's supposed to be the difference between them? Pay attention to rule one and rule two, right? For rule one, you assign P to the first atomic proposition, Q to the second. 
Well, then that leaves out that bottom proposition, right? That uh, for the bottom one, R is assigned uh, uh, to the second proposition, but that breaks rule one. That breaks rule one. So you have to pay attention to uh, when so you have to pay attention to uh, uh, the assignments for the letters to ensure that you're following rule one and rule two. So what's that second one? That's that's the right one. You know, P conditional Q. Okay. Here's another one. All right. What's the correct formula? I exist if I think. Hmm. What's the connective? Well, the connective is if. Now, th this should immediately send up an alert, right? We've got a, a conditional here, but we know there's an issue between if and only if. Right? Well, if, if it's only if, then that only if indicates the consequence. But here we just have if. And if we just have if, that indicates an antecedent. Okay. So uh, take a look at our options here. All right, not P, you know, that look at the top one, if not P, then not Q. Well, we're going to rule that one out because it's, because there's no negations within this sentence. We got if P, then Q. Well, that, that's a conditional. There's no negations. That already looks right. We got if P, then R. So again, another conditional, but no negation. So that also looks right. And the last one, if Q, then P. Oh, boy. Yeah, what are we supposed to do here? Right, we got three that look right. Well, take a look at the, the second from the bottom. We already talked about this, right? Following rule one, that R is out of place, right? There shouldn't be an R, it should be a Q. So then we have if P then Q, and then if Q then P. Well, it looks like then it should be if P then Q. But remember, if indicates the antecedent, right? I think is the antecedent. And following rule one, that will be assigned Q, right? I I. Th in this, in the proposition, that word if there indicates the antecedent. I think is the antecedent. So that's given Q. And then I exist is P. Right? So that's the bottom one, that uh, Q, uh, Q conditional P. That's the right formula for this sentence. Be careful when you're translating. <clears throat> um, watch the placement of letters in the conditionals. Hmm? Watch uh, if and only if. Right? you got to pay attention to which one's given to which. If indicates the antecedent, only if indicates the consequent. So again, it looks like it might be between these two, or even that third from the bottom one, but it's only this one. It's a, a Q conditional P. Right? That's, the, that's the correct formula. All right, looking at this one, notice we've got Q conditional P. Right. So in this, for the others, we had uh, translating from a sentence to the formula. Now we have a formula to a sentence. Okay, now we have a formula for, to a sentence. <clears throat> so what do you think we should do? Well, take a look at, first things first, take a look at the, the uh, connective. The connective is a conditional. Well, the first option is or, well, that's a disjunction, so that's not the one. The second option is, you know, if, then, those are the, those are the um, connectives there. Okay, well, that's a candidate. Uh, the third option, the figure sides are parallel. If the figure is a square, that's also a conditional. And then the last one, the figure squares are parallel and the figure is a square. Well, that's a conjunction. So it's a choice between the second and the third. All right. Well, how, now how do we distinguish between them? Uh, well, pay attention to the order of the letters in the sentence. That should tell you something. The, uh, remember the order, what you're supposed to do is go from the sentence to the letters. You're supposed to sign the first atomic proposition, the uh, P, the second atomic proposition, Q. So already, since we have Q right there, what we're told is, what we know from our rules is, um, the antecedent is the second proposition, second atomic proposition. Right? Well, that happens in the third one. We've got that if the square, the figure is a square, that's the antecedent, it's indicated by if, uh, and it's the second atomic proposition, so that's why it gets if Q then P. All right, so now we have a complex proposition with complex propositions. Overall, what sort of formula is this? Is this a, a disjunction? No, there's no disjunction. Conditional? No, dis no conditional. We've got negations here, but is this overall a negation? No, no, this is overall, this is not a negation. This is a conjunction overall. It's a conjunction of, neg uh, of negations. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the sentences. The first one says either or, right? Well, so that's a disjunction. We figured that out, so that's not it. The second, uh, proposition the connective is if then so that's a conditional well that's not what we're looking for the third one is either or okay so that's a disjunction well that's not what we're looking for okay. we'll find the last one candidate left does not win the election and candidate right does not win the election that's the conditional obligations 
Uh, be careful when you look through. You want to make sure you pay attention to negations. You want to make sure you pay attention to the uh, to uh, the connectors for disjunction, conjunction, and conditional. Make sure you're matching up the uh, the right ones. So for the next uh, sort of problem, you're given a, an argument, and you're supposed to assign uh, the atomic propositions. Now, I've been rather helpful here, and I've <laughs> indicated, right? So we have that, so just looking there, all truth is relative, but well, that's our first atomic proposition. I, I, I've been helpful here and, and already telling you where the atomic propositions are. <laughs> um, so you just have to start assigning uh, the letters according to rules one and rule two. So you'll you know hit that select button there on the screen, and it'll give you a little pull down menu. And then you select the proper assignments following rule one and rule two. So the first one, all truth is relative. That's the first proposition. It gets P. All right, we had to assign that P. Uh, you know, so you select which, which letter to use. Uh, and then, you know, for keeping in mind for rule two, right? So I have this atomic proposition. If there's some absolute truth, well, following rule one, it gets Q. But you have to look out for the rest of the argument. Notice that proposition also pops, that atomic proposition also pops up down here near the bottom. So it needs to get Q2. So you can't just go through the list, you know, first one P, second one Q, third one R, th fourth one S, you know, T, no. Right. In fact, if you notice, there's, you know, you know, this P through U for the pull down, you may not use all of these. I mean, there's one or two where you're going to use all of them, but for some of them, you're not going to use all of the letters. So you're going to need to pay attention to rule one and rule two in order to assign uh, the proper letters. So for the uh, so this is a similar sort of problem, except in this case, instead of a pull-down menu, you type in the letters. Right? You type in the letters. So you look for the atomic propositions, and in this case, right, now I've got the blanks here, <laughs> so you know that that's the atomic proposition. I've, I've helped you out with this. You don't, you, know, you don't need to discern the difference between the atomic proposition and the, and the complex one, uh, but you uh, need to pay attention to which atomic proposition uh, you're dealing with because some of these might pop up, you know, more than once. So, for instance, that first atomic proposition, either a person is either a person, excuse me, a person is pursuing a good life. That's the atomic proposition. Well, that pops up again several times, right? If you notice in that uh, second sentence, there it is. Right? A person is pursuing a good life. Well, that needs to get. So, the first first time you see it, it gets a P. The second time you see that a person is pursuing a good life, it gets a P there too, following rule one and rule two. Um, so you need to pay attention to where those, if you if it gets a letter one point in the argument, it needs to get the same letter throughout the rest. And in this case, as I said, you are typing in the letter. You're typing in the letter. So you're going to type it directly into the blank. Okay. Make sure it's capitalized. Make sure it's just the letter. Don't, don't type anything else besides that. And so, so this question, sort of problem, you have to put it, you have to type in the P, the Q, the R, and, and so on. For the next kind of problem, you have to type in the whole formula. Some of these will just have one formula. Some of these will have as many as three. This one actually has three. Uh, so it's not just, notice the change in the instructions, right? You know, symbolize the following proposition. Not just putting in the letters, you're symbolizing the whole formula. Right? So uh, the, whole, the whole sentence. So that first sentence, if one talks about nothing, then either nothing is a subject or nothing is a predicate. Now, what's kind of fun about this case, right away, you got to watch out for, for, for parentheses uh, uh, when necessary. Okay? You got to watch out for those parentheses. So, in this case, you know, we got that either or happening right after, right after uh, the then with the, uh, um, with the uh, 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 consequent. For the uh, for the conditional, right? Okay. So you got that either or, yeah, that comma is there, and you're like, oh wow, that's separate. No, it doesn't, right? Because that either is contained, you know, just immediately within the consequent. The either or, they always have to go together like that. So uh, this is a conditional, right? This is a conditional with a disjunction in the consequent, right? So it's going to look like that. You got the conditional with the with the uh, disjunction in the consequent. Okay, uh, so you make sure you, you pay attention to the parentheses uh, when necessary. Right. And that's that'll pop up. And not always, right? Look at that second sentence. If nothing is a subject, then one can describe nothing. That's just a straight up conditional. There's no uh, complex propositions within the conditional. Okay, uh, the last kind of problem, you're going to need to put in the entire sequence. And so 
this is going to require pretty much all the skills <laughs> that we've been developing so far, right? We've had to, uh, you know, we have to identify the premise and the conclusion. You have to assign atomic letters to the, you have to identify the atomic propositions versus the complex. You have to assign letters to the atomic propositions using rule one and rule two. And this one you have to do with real, rules three and rule four, right? Rule three and rule four. And remember rule three, you got to put that uh, 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 conclusion first, and then you uh, put in the uh, premises in order. Now this one's kind of straightforward, right? Because we see that as far as identifying the conclusion, we got that therefore, if we're sometimes mistaken or perceptually, that indicates the conclusion. And the, so you know the rest of these sentences in this uh, argument are uh, premises. Right? And you'll type them in that box that, that you'll see right there. Uh, here's another example. Uh, and this one is, it's, you know, I'm going to highlight this one in particular because this can trip you up. Rule three says, list the conclusion last, all right, in the sequence. List the conclusion last in the sequence. Well, if you're reading this, you say the first sentence, either a person is pursuing a life of happiness or a person is pursuing a life of ministry, uh, misery. Four, either a person, so that four indicates a set of premises that follows, right? So that first sentence there, that's the conclusion. And if that's the conclusion following rule three, you'll list the conclusion first, a space before, you have a space, then the two vertical lines, another, yeah, two vertical lines, then another space, then the conclusion. The conclusion itself is a disjunction. Following rule one and rule two, it's the first atomic proposition gets that P, the second pro atomic proposition gets that Q, right, so it's P or Q. And then you follow the rest of the rules, you provide uh, the premises in order separated by a comma. Okay. Let's take a look at this next one. It's false that one can talk about nothing. If one could talk about nothing, then either uh, nothing is a subject or nothing is a predicate. If nothing is a subject, then one could describe nothing. If nothing is a predicate, then one could describe, can be described as some, nothing. It's impossible to describe nothing and it's impossible to describe something as nothing. This is difficult. We have no indicator words. Right? We have no indicator words telling us which one is uh, the conclusion. Well, try to look at the under, try to uh, comprehend the meanings of the propositions here. All right? How is how is the reasoning uh, progressing? Now, the first sentence is, is a negation. All right. So, following rule one, it gets you know it gets assigned p, and it's a negation, not p. The second sentence has that same atomic proposition. Except in this case, it's not a negation, right? The first atomic proposition, no, sorry, the first complex proposition, the first sentence, it's false that one could talk about nothing. One could talk about nothing is the atomic proposition, that's P. The, uh, so that's not P, is that total uh, uh, complex proposition there. Look at the sentences. If one could, you know, if one can talk about nothing, it's like we just completely ignore the negation to begin with. And it goes into this line of reasoning where at the end it says, but by the way, if we assume then we can talk about nothing, then we reach these impossible conclusions. Well, then if, if we reach a possible conclusion, it had, that first assumption has to be false. This is a difficult one, but that first sentence again, yeah, in this case, it's also the conclusion. This isn't always going to happen, but sometimes it will happen. <clears throat> okay, so um, when we are typing out the premises, for this uh, argument. So we got our conclusion, we're typing out the premise. It kind of gets cut off in the box, but that's all right. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you type it in there correctly. It should be fine. Um, but you, you notice we've got several complex, we've got complex propositions within complex propositions, right? We've got complex, if one could talk about nothing, then either, right? That tells us that the consequent is a disjunction. Right? The second one, that the subject is another one, right? that's a straight up conditional. So when you're translating, you got to spot the connectives really fast. That helps identify the uh, atomic propositions. That helps you, you know, helps you with rule one, identifying the atomic propositions, making sure they, uh, you have the same one assigned that, to follow rule two, uh, and help you identify the uh, premises and the conclusion. Right? The connectives are really key for figuring that part out. Uh, 
this is just yet another example, right? So this is what a completed, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a completed example here. <laughs> sorry, I wanna uh, tell you, watch out for a couple of things. <clears throat> Don't leave uh, your sequence with a comma separating the last premise from the, uh, uh, from the, you know, the double vertical bars. Your last premise should not have any commas. Right? Don't leave an incomplete sequence. If you do either one of those things, you're not gonna get any credit. The computer's programmed to recognize the sequence. It can't recognize meaning. It can only recognize a string of letters and symbols. Right? So you have to type it in precisely following all four rules that we've been given. If you miss something in there, it's gonna count the whole thing wrong. Uh, this, you know, this is kind of another tricky one. That what's within quotation marks, that's it itself not an atomic proposition. Right? That believe it or not, that whole first sentence is an atomic proposition. Or excuse me, it's a complex. Sorry, it's a complex, right? With a negation, right? Uh, the atomic proposition would be there is empirical content for the claim all knowledge is empirical. That would be the atomic proposition, right? That says there is this thing, that, that's the atomic. Since it got the no in there, that makes it a negation. So uh, you have to be careful uh, to spot the difference between uh, a sentence that's mentioned within a sentence and the atomic proposition itself, right? Sometimes a sentence with, mentioned within a sentence can be an atomic proposition. You have to pay attention to the meaning of the sentence. Uh, make sure that when you type in your sequence, you have the proper spaces. This is incorrect. Uh, it, it, it will not work out well if you do this. Make sure you put you know, have the, all the premises and uh, make sure you have the uh, premises and the conclusion. Otherwise, uh, it won't count. All right, so that's kind of a rundown of all the kinds of problems we have for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, for this chapter. Uh, good luck with it. Uh, if you need to come by my office and talk about this, I'm more than welcome to see you.